Hey guys, has here at Shield Canine. Can we here at Shield Canine even train dogs without e-collars? When can we take the e-collar off the dog? Why do our trained dogs need to wear e-collars? People always ask me these questions or make these statements. So here you see a seven month old Preza raised and trained in our obedience program here. And he's walking off leash next to his handler. He wears an e-collar on a regular basis, but not today for the sake of the video. And his handler is actually one of our former trainers, Carson. And you see this dog performing very well in public. How can this be? If you listen to the detractors of e-collar training or our detractors here, um, you would believe that we just shock dogs into compliance and that all our training completely relies on this device that is attached to the dog. And of course, obviously, I mean, your eyes must be deceiving you. You're not seeing a dog that's not wearing anything completely following his handler's instructions. It's impossible. You can't be seeing this. Well, let's really talk about it. Let's, let's, let's talk about this topic in a, in a reasonable way. First of all, you have to understand, people are myopic. They tend to get tunnel vision. They see the e-collar, they have negative associations or thoughts about it. Maybe they don't know what it is, which I find in a lot of cases that is exactly what the problem is. And they see the e-collar and they assume that everything the dog is doing is a function of the device strapped to his neck. And of course, if you've trained any dogs, you know that devices don't train dogs, the training trains dogs. Devices just make that process a little bit easier. They expedite the communication process and ensure that the dog has a clear understanding of what's desirable and what's undesirable. Any good training system has a combination of motivation and obligation. We motivate the dog to do the right thing and we also obligate the dog to do the right thing. And the e-collar is just a part of that process. And no, it's not Thor's electric hammer that you bring down upon the head of the dog when he disobeys you. Um, it's actually a complex device that you use in, in a, in a multi-layered process if you're using it properly. And I know there are some people that use it in a more crude form and sometimes it can even work in that form. But it is just a device and it is just a tool. So let's really talk about when can you take it off. Now obviously I use this dog in the video because um, it's a nice video of a dog off leash in public. But you know, we here at Shield Canine, we have titled multiple dogs in IGP. IGP is a three-phase sport tracking obedience protection. And we are not allowed to use e-collars on our e-collar trained dogs in the competition. And yet, you know, we've done well in IGP. How is that possible? Well, obviously, there's something more going on than just the, um, you know, a static shock on the dog. There's, there's obviously a lot more going on. So let's talk about it. Let's first talk about when can you take the e-collar off the dog? Well, I always say you can take the e-collar off the dog when you're ready to take the accountability off your dog. And there are times like sport competition or, um, you know, certain times when that might be appropriate. But if you continue to take that e-collar off your dog and you don't, let's say, let's say Carson stopped using that e-collar with his Preza. What would happen? Well, you would see a degradation in the reliability of the behavior because the dog would learn that the behaviors are now optional. There is no accountability for failure to perform the behaviors. Now, can you make accountability in other ways? Yes, of course you can. But there are certain limitations to other methods of making accountability that do not apply to the e-collar because the e-collar is a wireless device that reaches across great distances. Right? And again, when I speak about accountability, I'm not just talking about shocking your dog on, on, on a high level. That's, that's, that's not at all the only thing that I'm saying. There's, there's many ways to do it, and, and, and the e-collar is actually a very complex device that, that has such a vast scope and so, so many options from a training perspective. But I find the people that tend to be against the e-collar in training and, and are very critical of it are two types of people. So you've got the positive-only types. The positive-only types would have you believe that if you train a dog to do something, so like this little female German Shepherd puppy I'm training here to heal, with just food, by the way, um, if you just train a dog to do something, then they will always perform that behavior under distraction, uh, anywhere, everywhere, because you've just motivated them so much that they're willing to do it for you. And that's an absolute trope. I mean, it doesn't even really work for humans. Positive only doesn't doesn't work even in, in the human realm. And we're cerebral beings that really understand um, right from wrong versus dogs that are um, simple, you know, beings that, that, are, that, that operate on instinct and impulse. So it doesn't work for humans. There's a reason why we have systems of accountability all throughout our society. We've got police, we've got the criminal justice system, we've got security, we've got fences, we've got all sorts of things because we know that even human beings who know right from wrong still often make bad decisions. And we need to have some method to hold them accountable for those decisions. Otherwise, things will devolve into this thing called anarchy. Well, it's no different for dogs, except they're, they're much more simple than us and they require more direct communication. So the positive only types would have you believe if you just train the dog to do the right thing, that they will always do that thing, which is absolute nonsense if you really think about it from a logical standpoint. 
So, you know, that's that that's that argument dead in the water. Now, the world is full of this thing called competing motivators or these things called competing motivators. Competing motivators are anything that capture your dog's interest, whether it's people, smells, garbage on the floor, another dog, a rabbit, whatever it is. And positive only trainers would have you believe that the dog will never pick competing motivators if you train in their system and you use uh, positive reinforcement the dog will always just pick your liver treats or whatever it is that you're using um, over those competing motivators and of course if you've ever done any positive only training you know that that's absolute nonsense and you're not going to be able to achieve what we're showing here with a five month old doberman puppy in public by the way um, you know you'll never be able to achieve that with positive only training because there's no accountability it's just options and motivation and while motivation is very powerful it's not not the sum total. Now I find the other people that are against the use of the e-collar more old school types and ironically they often use um, you know they use corrections in dog training right so they I you know they'll say things like oh I got a I got a title on my dog and I never use the e-collar or, or my dogs are trained I don't use e-collars and it's like I'm like oh, okay you never corrected your dog right uh no I corrected my dog oh you don't walk your dog off a leash I mean sorry you, you use a leash with your dog well, yeah, I use a leash with my dog. They'll always say, that there's leash laws. I'm like, yeah, all these videos I just showed, I probably passed police officers and they leave me alone because my dogs are completely under control. So leash laws are just an excuse. Don't make excuses. If you could have your dog completely off leash all the time, you would do it, right? So the reason why you have your dog on a leash, and by the way, the positive only types do this too. They have their dogs on a leash. Well, if your dog is so reliable and so obedient and loves you so much, why do you have a dog on a leash? Why are you attaching a piece of rope or, or, or leather to another animal's, to, to a being's neck and holding him to you? Because surely he loves you and, and you've trained him and, he's, and, and he understands what it is that you want. Why are you doing that? Well, you're doing that because you know that you can't trust him completely, that he has his own mind and he's gonna make his own decisions and those don't, don't always jive with yours. So, you know, I always say to people, you know, they, you, you point out the, the, the hypocrisy in their position and, and, and usually it kind of gives them pause to think, right? So I know like a lot of the more old school types, there's other ways to make accountability with a dog that don't involve the e-collar. But the e-collar is just the best way because there's so much scope with the e-collar. There's, so there's so much range on the e-collar. I'm not just talking range and distance, range and what you can do. You can motivate a dog with the e-collar. You can obligate a dog with the e-collar. You can activate and suppress a dog with the e-collar. There's just so many possibilities with an e-collar and they really open up um, you know, a plethora of options for both the dog and the handler. And for me, that's the biggest reason why we really use the e-collar a lot here. So can you take the e-collar off? Yes, you can. Especially if you've trained your dog properly, as you see that the dogs that we've trained here, this dog here in this video, he's a, he was an IGP2 dog, right? And he wears the e-collar in the training, but obviously in the competition, he doesn't wear the e-collar, right? So the, the e-collar is a tool that has so many applications and people view it so myopically because they just think of it in the context of shock and really it's so much more than that um, and, and I'm not going to get into all of that right now just because it's 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 such a complex topic but all over my channel you see me using the e-collar in different ways and, and maybe it gives you an idea of all the plethora of options available now there are places where the e-collar is banned because again myopic people and animal rights organizations which are never to be trusted right um, you know have managed to get it banned and and then you there's handlers that are forced to train in secret or people uh, use other devices, which is fine. But just understand the e-collars for what they are. Using an e-collar doesn't mean you don't know how to train a dog. It just means that you're choosing to train a dog, in my opinion, with the most uh, modern tool available.